Hello, everyone, and welcome to our session on custom property editors and types for experience builder. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you making the time in your busy TDX schedule. I'm Alicia, and I'm a product manager for experience builder. And I'm Trey, I'm a software engineer at Salesforce. Quick reminder, as always, we might make forward looking statements in this presentation. You should make purchasing decisions based on a product that's currently available. And let's get started. So here's a scenario. Have you ever created a component that your admin users find difficult to configure? And maybe you wished for a way to improve your component to make their lives better. Well, you're in the right session. We have something that can help, which is custom property editors and custom property types. These features are now available as a beta for components in Experience Builder LWR sites. Today, I'll show you four ways you can use custom property editors and types to create components that are more user-friendly to configure and to make your life as a developer easier. Trey will then do a demo. There, you'll get to see the syntax and learn how to create custom property editors and types. And then finally, I'll share the roadmap and how you can get started. Here's three terms we're going to use all throughout this session. Property refers to a field or attribute in an LWC. Property type refers to the data type of the property. So for instance, Boolean, string, or integer. And property editor refers to the user interface that admins see when the admin is configuring the property. So in this image, we're showing an input field as the property editor. And now let's get into how we can use custom property editors and types. The first thing you can do is you can create an LWC that acts as the custom property editor for your component. For instance, let's say I have a component with a string property. Previously, my options would be a combo box or input field as the UI for my admin users to configure the property. Now, I can create any LWC to act as a property editor. For instance, I can now create an icon group for the admin to configure horizontal alignment, or I can have a custom picker for the admin to select the data source. And this means my component is now more visual and more user-friendly for the admin to configure. Moving on to the second thing, there are now additional out-of-the-box types that you can use to define properties with more accurate semantic meaning. So in addition to the existing types, which are string, integer, Boolean, content reference, and color, you can now use the new lightning types that I'm showing in the list here. Each lightning property type has a default property editor. So if you use one of these types, you won't need to create an editor. And the picture here shows the default editor for the lightning rich text type. Of course, if you want to create your own property editor for any of these lightning types, you're free to do so too. Now, let me show you an example of when you can use the new lightning types. Let's say in my component, I have a property where the admin needs to configure a date. Previously, I would model this with the type string and the admin will see an input field to type in the date. Now, I can model my property more specifically with type equals to lightning date type. And with no additional coding on my part other than this, the admin user now gets a date picker to configure the date, reducing the number of configuration errors that occur. And now here's the third thing you can do. 
you can create your own custom property types for easier code reuse and more organized code. Here's the example. Let's say I have a button component that needs some border properties, border style, color, weight, and radius. Later on, as I'm building more components, I realize that image, toast, and carousel also need the same set of border properties. What I would previously do was copy and paste the border properties code from the button to all my other components. So I would copy and paste border style, color, weight, radius several times over to the other components, which is fine. But now I've got something better. Now I can create one custom property type and reference that property type in all my components. So I would create a custom my border property type that contains all the broader properties I want. And then I can reference the custom property type in all my components with one line of code with the type equals to my border property type. And in the future, let's say I want to add more border properties. Let's say border left and border right. I will make the update in one place in my border property type and all my components will get border left and border right properties. Having just one place to update my code instead of remembering to check in four or more components makes my life easier. Finally, last but not least, when you create a custom property type, you can organize the property into tabs or accordions. Previously, I could arrange my properties in one long list in some sort of logical order. Now, when I create a custom property type, I can arrange my property into a tab or accordion. And this helps the admin users easily navigate to the properties that they're looking for. To summarize, I've shown you four ways you can use custom property editors and types. You can create an LWC custom property editor, use the new lightning types, create your own custom property types. And when you create your own types, you can organize the layout into accordions or tabs. And now I'll hand it over to Trey for the demo. Hey everyone, to demonstrate all of these different properties and features of custom property areas and custom property types, I'm going to first show what it looks like using a component that does not use these features. And so what you see here is an article component uh, with custom properties that, uh, with what you see here is a article component that has properties that aren't using custom property types or custom property editors. Uh, right off the bat, you'll notice that the date is a not a date picker, it is a string input, and it's not validating properly that the inputted string isn't a date. You'll also notice that uh, text alignment is a pick list of values from left to right. And let's say we want to represent this as a visual picker of what the text alignment does. Furthermore, you see that uh, border and the different aspects of the border are laid out in one long list of inputs. And it's really displeasing to have to scroll up and down to edit these different properties. And so let's get into the code behind these properties and how we can enhance them with custom property editors. So pulling up my LWC component in Salesforce DX, you see here the different properties of my component. Um, the first one I pointed out was the date. And so here you'll see we have a date string uh, that's type string and it has a default uh, with this uh, sample placeholder string. Uh, what we wanna do here is to actually use one of our out of the box types that we defined earlier, that's a lightning string. And so this way we get the out of the box editing experience for a date and we also get um, the validation that goes with the date. Um, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to change is the style property. 
uh, for text alignment. And so here, um, we're going to want to provide a nice visual editor for this style property. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to provide a custom property editor to override uh, that editing experience. And last but not least, for the layout properties, we want to put these in one nice grouping. This way, um, we can have them reused in different areas of our in different components. And we can have the editing style consistent across all the components that use these layout properties. And so let's look at what a component looks like with these changes. Um, so with the changes made for custom property errors and custom property types, um, you'll notice that the type is now referencing a lightning date type as opposed to a string. And so with that, you'll see that, um, we'll see later in the UI how that's reflected. Um, the text alignment property, which we wanted to provide a editor override for, we now reference our custom editor that we use to display the text alignment. And lastly, we have our layout properties referencing a custom type we created called layout property. Um, and this custom type includes both the validation for layout properties and how they're going to be displayed uh, in the editing experience. And so let's look at this layout property that we created and the alignment custom property editor. The layout property that we created is using a new type of metadata we created called custom property types. And so custom property types are a piece of JSON that is used to validate this property. Um, and you'll see here that this JSON is specifying that layout is a object, so it's JSON object type, and it has these sub properties. And so the sub properties you see are border style, border weight, border radius, et cetera. On top of controlling the validation through this schema, the custom property type also has a design file to show how this type should be laid out in the builder. And so here you'll see that we have, we are declarity laying out these properties in a tab set and you'll see where each property is expected to appear among the tab set. And so here we have the border styling properties in the first tab. And then in the second tab, we have the sizing properties. And then on top of that, we have a editor override for the border style property. And lastly, let's look at the custom property editor for the alignment. And so here we have a custom property editor um, that is used to specify uh, how you want to align your text. And so this is a visual uh, alignment and so it lets the user pick visually how they want to see their text align. And we'll see how that's demonstrated shortly. And with those code changes, um, what you'll see is that our article component starting off here with this list of components now looks something more like this, where we have a visual picker where we want and we have full control over the layout and organization. And so here with the date property, you'll see that this is actually a date picker now, much more visually pleasing and allows us to pick and validate dates. Um, you'll see that text alignment looks like a text alignment picker that people are more familiar with and it will update the text uh, visually, right? And lastly, you'll see that the different border properties, the sizing and the borders are now organized among tabs and you can see how the different properties are reflected. And that about sums it up for uh, showing the code and what it looks like in Experience Builder uh, for components with custom property editors and types. And before I go, one cool little uh, thing I could show you with custom property editors is that you could potentially integrate um, ChatGPT and do any sort of wild thing you can think of with your custom property editing experience. So here I could do a dog with a hat. 
and I could generate an image using ChatGPT. And here we see a dog. Uh, he's not wearing the hat. But that's just a little fun thing you could do. And, you know, you could think of any sort of custom property editing experience, like, you know, map selectors and things like that. And that sort of opens up what th the developers can do for their editing. Um, and with that, I'll hand it back to Alicia to go over the roadmap. Okay. Thank you, Trey. To wrap up the session, I'll share with you what's on the roadmap and point you to some useful resources. Here's the roadmap for custom property editors and types. We had a developer preview in spring 23. We're now heading into summer 23, and we have a beta for Experience Builder LWR. It's an open beta, so LWCs containing custom property editors and types will work in any LWR site without you needing to toggle any permissions. I'm especially excited that packaging and SFDX extensions now work, and I can't wait for you all to try it out for yourselves. In Winter 23, we'll enable custom property editors and types for LWCs in Aura templates. This way, you can reuse the same LWCs across Aura and LWR. In Spring 24 and beyond, we'll GA for Experience Builder and have a developer preview for Lightning App Builder. If you like these features or want something more, please vote on Idea Exchange. That helps us make the case to keep improving custom property editors and types. So I hope you're excited to try out custom property editors and types. To get started, scan this QR code to download the quick start guide. Inside the guide, there's a sample package of components and types, as well as links to documentation that you can refer to. Once you've tried out custom property editors and types, do give us feedback in the Experience Cloud Trailblazer community. We appreciate your feedback to help iron out the kinks and shape the roadmap. And that's the end of our presentation. Thank you for your time and attention.